Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, it's a distinct pleasure and an honor to host another guest in our FPC podcast, the project, the Visegrad Group in Georgia initiative, which is supported by the Embassy of the Republic of uh, Poland to Tbilisi. Our first guest was first guest was the ambassador of Poland, Mr. Maszkiewicz. Then we had an honor to host the ambassador of Hungary uh, to Georgia. Her Excellency Victoria Horvat, and the last speaker of our project was uh, the ambassador of the Republic of Czech, but the Czech Republic, Mr. Petr Mikiska. Today, I have an honor to welcome the ambassador of Slovakia to Georgia, Mr. Pavel Vizdal. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us and for uh, your participation. Thank you very much for invitation. Uh, well, I, I'd like to address to you, Your Excellency, the question uh, that is a standard question. And this question is, why before matters for Slovakia? Mm, it's not a very easy question, but I, <laughs> I will try. Uh, I think that Visegrad cooperation is an example of the principle of unity and diversity which is especially important today when our common values face uh, major challenges that could affect uh, the image of our continent in the upcoming decades. Uh, V4 is an important tool for pragmatic regional cooperation and an important guarantee of good neighbor relations and regional stability as well. At the same time, I have to say that V4 is not a dogma for us. V4 is not a homogeneous block and regional solidarity is not something uh, automatically binding. Along with many common interests and positions, and they are actually prevailing, there are areas where our interests differ and we feel free to act independently and look for other partners in promoting our interests. At the first sight, it may seem that the Visegrad cooperation is no longer relevant within the European Union. This is because all cardinal economic and uh, security and political advantages of being integrated in international <coughs> sorry, structures that the Visegrad countries enjoy nowadays derive from the membership in the EU and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, of course. But personally, I think that this is not the full picture. On the contrary, I'm confident that cooperation is still relevant and beneficial for Slovakia. <coughs> Geographically, Slovakia lies in the center of the Visegrad group, except for a short border with Austria and the Ukraine as a non-member EU member state. It is surrounded by Visegrad countries. Uh, this also means that our connection to, to other EU macro regions, Germany, for example, Northern Europe, Southeast and Southern Europe, is predominantly moderated by one of the Visegrad countries. Uh, historically, Slovakia has a long common political, social and cultural history with two of its neighbors, Hungary and the Czech Republic. Politically speaking, Slovak attitude to, attitudes to the Visegrad members were and still are influenced by its peculiar path to EU membership. <coughs> Sorry. Slovakia was a latecomer in the accession process. At the end of the 90s, it was not clear whether it would be included in the planet, let's say, first wave of EU enlargement in 2004. Slovakia signed the association agreement already in 1993, short, shortly after gain, gaining its uh, independence. But uh, auto authoritarian tendencies of the second and especially uh, third Mechia government after 
if I'm not mistaken, after 1994, had strained relations with the EU. Slovakia was invited to accession negotiations only in uh, at the at the Helsinki summit in 1999, two years later than seven other post-communist countries. And during those years, comparisons with other Visegrad countries and their relative advances in the EU and NATO accession processes help to augment anti mature opposition in Slovakia. These uh, difficult years have influenced the public perception of the EU membership, as well as the role of cooperation with neighboring countries. And after that growing Western criticism of the increasingly autocratic mature government, and shrinking EU membership prospect, prospects led Mechiar to flirt with, let's say, alternative foreign policy. Regard, regardless of whether this was ever a real alternative, the risk of being marginalized in the EU integration process help uh, unit and strengthen anti mature opposition in Slovakia. It was also one of the chief united factors of the first government of Mikuláš Zurinda, who replaced Mečiar in 1998. And that time, Visegrad cooperation was perceived as something that could help Slovakia to catch up with the integration train. Slovakia is the smallest Visegrad country. The V4 provides us with an opportunity to pursue its or our national interest at the regional as well as the EU level. Therefore, the V4 is the first choice for Slovakia when it comes to the discussion of regional issues or, or EU policies. Slovakia strongly emphasizes the point that the V4 is based uh, on the principle of solidarity and equality, a principle demonstrated uh, in the four countries for example, equal contribution to the budget of the International Visegrad Fund. Recently, the V4 has had an increasingly important economic significance for Slovakia. The V4 countries are the most important trade partner for us, even bigger than Germany, the most important individual one. But I have to also say that, that our membership in the Eurozone naturally pushes Slovakia to look for other partners since the Czech Republic, Hungary and, and Poland are not, let's say, in at the moment. On the other hand, Slovakia recognizes the importance of the single EU market. I would like to mention that Slovakia also pays significant attention to the development of cooperation with non-V4 countries within the framework or of uh, the V4+. Plus. In, in general, cooperation with third non-V4 countries and groupings may be regarded as another important pillar of the V4. Cooperation with the framework or the V4 plus formula already includes a long list of countries, both European and non-European. In a number of cases, the cooperation has become systematic and continuous. For example, V4 plus Eastern Partnership, V4 plus Western Balkans, Balkans ministerial summits and, and V4 plus Japan, just to mention a few. Mm, neighborhood and enlargement policy represents an area in which the V4 claims to create added value for the EU. The Visegrad group has been supporting the enlargement policy intensively, especially as regards the Western Balkans. Mm, the V4 countries have also became, become advocates of the Eastern partnership countries. For Slovakia, it's very important also a sectoral cooperation. 
Uh, V4 cooperation has also gained a significant sectoral dimension. Certain progress has been achieved in the fields of energy, infrastructure and security defense. Though in all these areas, there is still a long way to go to achieve uh, tangible results. Another important field of cooperation is the EU neighborhood policy with its specific focus on the eastern neighbors and enlargement policy, as I said before. For us, V4 is important because it represents 65 million people and is much stronger than any individual country alone. Even if there are many areas where our countries do not agree, when we agree, then our voice must be listened to. The civic dimension of cooperation, especially in the fields of research, innovation, education, culture, is also important for us and is supported through the programs of the International Visegrad Fund. This dimension, as I said, is very important for us. Well, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your answer. Yes, the 30 years uh, of the existence of the Visegrad Group shows how efficient and effective these regional alliances, Euro-Atlantic Integration, International Visegrad Fund, uh, number of regional infrastructure projects. Uh, also, it is very important the aspect of uh, support to the aspiring countries, countries that want to become new members and the huge support uh, to Eastern Partnership and Western Balkan countries. But still, uh, uh, European Union and of course, uh, P4, has uh, several challenges. I would like to combine two questions that I was going to address to you, Your Excellency. Uh, could you tell me what are the main challenges uh, of the V4 and generally what is the role of V4 in uh, coping with such kind of challenges? Yeah. Uh, it is important to stress that uh, the V4 was not created as an alternative to the European integration. Uh, on the contrary, its main purpose was to facilitate and speed up our integration to the European Union. Today, EU is our vital space and V4 conceived as a pro-European grouping since our creation. It's not only to look after its interests, but also to contribute in constructive ways to solving the challenges and issues the EU is facing and to preserve and strengthen uh, European unity. Uh, we have similar position and interest in many areas from the internal market, economic and social policy to, for example, security policy. However, there are also some areas where position of Visegrad countries diverge. But I would like to add that cooperation on concrete policies and similar positions on specific questions do not necessarily imply convergence on other issues. This is my little bit diplomatic answer. To sum up, under current conditions, the Slovak positions to Visegrad is subordinated to our interest in the EU. I, I think that Visegrad group can play a constructive role in the European integration. The Union might benefit from Central European sensitivity concerning the Eastern security issues, Ukraine, Belarus, reinforcing security of three Baltic member states, for example. I would like to, to say that given our common cultural and historical backgrounds, we, we naturally became very close partner within the EU. From my point of view, most probably 
the Visegrad will never become a unified structure because V4 is only a pragmatic instrument. The V4 group has no institutionalized structure. However, the group sets its priorities for every half a year or every year uh, under a rotating presidency. The priorities are mostly linked with the priorities of the European Union and the V4 tries to find a common ground on issues that are actually discussed by the whole European bloc. Particularly, the V4 advocates strong cohesion and agriculture policy or EU's enlargement policy. The V4 has been loudly promoting accession of Western Balkans countries and strengthening the EU's ties with Eastern Partnership countries, Belarus, Ukraine, Moldova, Armenia, Georgia and Azerbaijan. It is among our top priorities nowadays. Therefore, the, the V4 welcomes that, the, for example, that the current European Commissioner for the enlargement is Hungarian and European Commissioner for Agriculture is Polish. But surprisingly, the V4 has a different position when it comes, for example, to European Recovery Fund proposed by the European Commission in, in May 2020, this year after the COVID crisis. The European Commission proposed that allocation of the recovery funds will be partially based on the level of unemployment in past years. The Czech Republic is a country with the lowest unemployment. Therefore, they strongly criticize proposed allocation. Hungary was also very critical towards the plan. On the other hand, uh, Slovakia and Poland were quite optimistic regarding the European Recovery Fund and raised only, let's say, mild objections. Before the pandemic, the V4 was in the core of the so-called Friends of Cohesion a group of uh, net beneficiaries beneficiaries from the European budget and they joint, jointly advocated an idea of strong cohesion policy with rich budget. With the pandemic and recovery plan, everything has changed and individual V4 states express diverse ideas of the recovery. These differences show that the V4 cooperation has uh, its limits. The V4 countries should definitely focus on finding alliances and partners in various agendas, not only among the group, but also within the whole European bloc. It's uh, also worth to mention that we want to continue to build a positive perception of the V4 brand and we will look for constructive solutions and pragmatic cooperation in areas where we have common interests and positions. It is mainly a matter of coordinating positions on selected European issues, such as, as I said, cohesion policy, common agriculture policy or enlargement policy as well as uh, security or defence. As membership in the V4 is not exclusive for each V4 country, there is a viable scenario of cooperation with partners in the V4 and parallel operation in other regional initiatives. We are determined to also work on further development, for example, of the uh, Slavko or Austerlitz format, Slavko format, that is gaining a new momentum. There is no uh, antagonism amongst our regional engagement. We consider them, them complementary, not uh, contradictory. For example, we are, I mean Slavko format, Czechia, Austria and Slovakia about to sign the Memorandum of Understanding regarding historically the, the first development project of the Slavko format in Georgia, which aims to support local communities through uh, development of tourism, agriculture, education of the region of uh, Aragvi. My conclusion is, 
I will use maybe three basic principles of our fifth presidency of the Visegrad group in 2018 and 2019 that we need to to promote unity wherever it is possible offer solutions where it is beneficial and respect differences where it is necessary to sum up my answer the v force currently weak institu institutionalization allows its members to concentrate more on on areas of joint interest while avoid avoiding those in which they cannot agree the weight of the v4 will increase also after brexit at least mathematically so the visegrad group cannot afford to be excluded from the processes of of redefining of the EU. Well, thank you so much, uh, Your Excellency. Yes, before uh, illustrates the deficiencies we have already mentioned, especially uh, in terms of uh, immigration quotas, also the common approach uh, to the budgetary issues. And there are plenty of things that can be written and indicated into the CV of uh, V4. And yes, in this dynamic world where everything uh, is being changed very fastly and there are a lot of challenges, we know the current situation in Belarus, you have uh, said a couple of words also about uh, the current state of affairs in Ukraine. Uh, the V4 is becoming more and more important regional player within the European Union itself. And uh, well, actually, I don't like the questions like this about the predictions about the future, but still it is very important to know your opinion, sir, as an ambassador, as a diplomat, as a person who is in uh, the uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry of uh, the <coughs> Slovak Republic. Uh, in your opinion, what is the future of V4? Can it be transformed? Uh, may other uh, regional players join this uh, initiative? Uh, what is the future of V4? Mm, I Quite think. Questions, yes. Yeah, I, I think, but of course, I am not an expert on this agenda. That the V4 is not likely to move towards stronger institutionalization. A, a weak institu institutionalization also helps the V4 to overcome potential divergences in political positions. The International Visegrad Fund will remain the most robust Visegrad institution. What may further develop are informal institutions are and, and instruments of cooperation is presidencies high level working groups uh, advisory platforms etc it is uh, very important to say that in order to remain viable the v4 should remain open to cooperation with any country or group of countries via the v4 plus formula the list of interested countries is growing longer year by year. Non-V4 EU members represent the most natural allies for the V4 and partners for bigger coalitions, let's say, needed for the successful presentation of regional V4 interests at the EU level. In this regard, we organize large number of summits, uh, meetings, in the very successful V4 Plus format, where we meet with both our traditional European partners and friends. For example, Germany, V4 Plus, France, Benelux, Baltic 3, and uh, North Baltic 8. The second circle would include countries from the nearest EU neighborhood, as well as those aspiring for EU membership. The EAP and Western Balkan countries are the natural candidates. Uh, furthermore, the V4 countries have the potential to positively shape the EU's enlargement policy by actively supporting EU membership for Western Balkan countries. Thanks to um, 
its support of an open door policy in both the EU and NATO, the V4 countries enjoy a high level of, conf of confidence in the Western Balkans. The main task for Brussels and as well as Bratislava, Prague and Warsaw and Budapest is to convince EU member states already suffering from uh, enlargement fatigue that such a policy pays off even after Brexit. Uh, in the Western Balkans, the V4 could promote European project and unity while guaranteeing an open door policy. Another priority for the V4 is relation with its neighbors to the east. Uh, the V4 has always been united in its opposition to, to Russia's annexation of Crimea, aggressions towards Ukraine or conflict in Georgia as well. In this regard, we should continue supporting reforms and technical assistance for Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia. Under certain conditions, the V4 could also help to redefine relations between the EU and Belarus. The V4's geographic position on the eastern edge of uh, both the EU and, and NATO gives its member states an important role in security and defense. As transit countries for oil and gas exports to the EU, V4 form a key part of any future energy union within the EU. The Visegrad bloc is also crucial in transport infrastructure, for instance, the proposed uh, Via Carpathia linking to uh, linking the Baltic with Romania and Bulgaria will be the easternmost north-south corridor in the EU. Regarding future of V4, going back a little bit to COVID, I think that it is important to build on positive practical experience. For example, joint uh, repatriation of our citizens due to COVID pandemics and explore new opportunities in, in meaningful projects. In this regard, uh, Slovakia supports the intention to intensify uh, cooperation in the field of health and, and science reflected in, the, reflected in the Polish V4 presidency program. In the current situation, this is an extremely important aspect of the development of our relations. Environment, for example, is the next main topic. What may come as a surprise, uh, taking into account that the overall perception is that the environmental policies have created a relevant point of the Visegrad cooperation. The consideration could be categorized uh, in two groups. The first contains the questions of energy security and, and the second re refers more to the new models of production and, let's say, consumption. One of the main sphere where the V4 should focus its fund is a circular economy, which, which from my point of view could create business opportunities and subsequently help in bringing about green jobs, socio-economic environmental development and enhance international competitiveness. The V4 efforts would focus on exchanging information and, and best practices to search for new opportunities in the areas of energy efficiency and renewable energy waste and, and water management. Uh, from, from my point of view, in the mid-term perspective, the Visegrad group should take in position in selected, not numerous areas where consensus is uh, attainable and abstaining from actions where diverging views prevail. And I think that we must increase uh, also operational capabilities and funds in the International Visegrad Fund, which has been established, uh, as you said, 20 years ago. Uh, in, in Slovakia, we are proud that, that 
that we can call IVF the first international institution based in Bratislava, which has over the years become an integral part of our diplomatic and social life. Within the Visegrad Fund, I am convinced that we have to intensify uh, special program Visegrad for Eastern Partnership Program la launched in 2011. Program supports European Union Eastern Partnership Policy. Mm, the aim is to facilitate the unique know-how of the Visegrad countries with challenges of, challenges of uh, democratic transition and with establishing sustainable regional cooperation. Since the outset of this program, the Visegrad Fund has supported projects and academic scholarships for graduate students from EAP region in total worth exceeding 16 million euros, if I am not mistaken. Uh, the program has also received funding from external donors, namely from Canada, uh, Switzerland, Germany, the Netherlands, South Korea. To sum up, the V4 isn't a coherent bloc. It's a coalition of countries interested in cooperating, cooperating in selected areas. Diverse positions of the V4 countries have not been rare in the past, even on issues of strategic interest. I am sure that we have to continue the beneficial cooperation despite these differences. It seems that the key to the effectiveness of V4 and its positive contribution to all countries is to continue maintaining the model of weak institutionalization. This means uh, greater flexibility and the non-binding nature of the cooperation. A move towards a high, higher degree of institutionalization would not strengthen the V4. On the contrary, Mm, it would limit its ability to overcome periods when the position of partners on strategic issues differ. In, in this con content, it is uh, necessary to support less established informal institutions in the form of regular, uh, regular meetings of high representatives of the Visegrad countries, but especially representatives of, of individual uh, individual ministries, governmental and non-governmental experts or working groups. Specific importance for uh, V4 is to continue support of the IVF. And maybe in terms of visibility, the Visegrad group continues to be the, the most important regional initiative in, in Central Europe. The, the current anniversary of the 20 years of the International Visegrad Fund and especially next year, the 30th anniversary of the Visegrad Group, make our informal group even more visible and therefore more responsible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, and thank you very much for your answers. Uh, well, as a scholar of the V4 and the V4 issues, I'm very happy that the presence of the Visegrad group in Georgia is being grown right now because we see more and more IF, uh, IVF uh, initiatives supported, uh, yeah. and uh, also we see more and more uh, students uh, going to study to V4 countries, thanks to the financial support of the International Visegrad Fund. And also on the 30th uh, anniversary, on the occasion of 30th anniversary of the Visegrad Group in February, we're going to start the second edition of this project and the leading think tankers from uh, four V4 countries uh, and also the director of the International Visegrad uh, fund uh, will be involved in this initiative and in this podcast. Well, from my side, I'd like to thank you, sir, for spending this time with us. Thank for you very a much. Very interesting conversation and wish you all the best and have a fruitful and successful day.
and stay safe. <laughs> stay safe. Grigol, and and do, do you have the contact from the uh, to the Slovak uh, think tanks and NGOs, or you need my help somehow? Yeah, you know, yeah, yes, I have uh, uh, direct contacts with Mr. Grigory Mesežnikov uh, at a level because I used to work there in uh, Slovak Foreign Policy Association. So really, I, yes, okay. yes, I mean it was uh, uh, my field research in, in the uh, uh, framework of my PhD research. So. So perfect. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, of course, I, I'll keep in touch with you, sir. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Thank you. And, and have a nice day and weekend. <laughs> Thank you. So.